Today on The Peaks Life, myself, Lynn Fernie and Mike Warren are joined by Dr. Sean Baker. Sean is a well-known proponent of the carnivorous lifestyle and author of the book, The Carnivore Diet. Like many of us, Sean believes that common disease conditions that are often thought to be lifelong and progressive can be reversed on this diet. And he's seen plenty of evidence of that through his work as a coach, consultant, and medical doctor. Sean is the CEO and co-founder of MeetRx, a coaching and community platform built specifically to provide support and advocacy for the carnivore community. Sean's a lifelong multi-sport elite level athlete with a significant list of achievements. And in his early 50s, he continues to set records for indoor rowing. One glance at Sean's physique is enough evidence that he thrives on the carnivore lifestyle and we can all learn much from his wealth of knowledge. All right, so welcome to The Peace Life. Sean Baker, welcome all the way from Southern California to Down Under Australia. Guys, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> pleasure. Now, Sean, the, uh, the guys shooting in would have heard your bio and it's a pretty extensive bio, but if I said to you, what are the, maybe the top couple of highlights from your career and your bio so far? What would you, what would you pull out as something that stood out in your mind? This was a, a game changer for you or something that sort of changed your career? Well, you know, obviously, uh, my experience as a, you know, two decades as a physician, as a surgeon, you know, just realizing that not only that does lifestyle nutrition have an impact on disease, but it has a tremendous impact and probably it's the most uh, powerful tool or weapon we, we have and we don't know how to use it as physicians. We, we don't even, it, it's, it's, it's the most powerful weapon and we don't even know what to do with it or know how to use it. And so I think that was probably the most impactful thing for me as to what, you know, if I were to look back across the course of my life, you know, I think uh, other things that I've been consistently doing, just athleticism, competition, you know, uh, you know, doing that stuff my whole life, that's been very important for me. And it's, it's something that I, I'm very much a proponent of, but uh, you know, as far as a, a sort of, uh, to use a, a very popular phrase now, a game changer for me. You know, was, was seeing the, seeing and we'll the, get to that later. Won't right, we? I know you are. Well, let's see the, uh, the incredible influence that nutrition has on just a whole variety of things. Yeah, absolutely. So given our audience is probably tuning in, a lot of them would be either going through keto, thinking about carnival, thinking about keto. They're in that stage where they're, they're looking to make a wellness change, but they may not be fully understanding of what's involved and sort of how to go about it. If I said to you, as a, as a coach and a leader and a mentor in this area, what would be your top five tips around someone starting out on carnival? How would you address that? Yeah, so I, I don't know that I'll, I'm not sure how many I'll do, but I'll, I'll, I'll talk and we'll see how many you can sure. Sure. drag out of this. But I'll count you know, I, think, I think the first thing we have to realize is that just in general, we don't really have a good handle on nutrition for humans. I mean, we just don't. We, we've done hundred years of science has been pretty poorly done science. You know, we've mostly done epidemiologic studies, which, you know, really are very poor science. And so we, there, there is no real good answer. There's no diet out there that's been rigorously tested to the degree you'd want to, to make any comment about how long you're going to live, if you're going to get disease or not, it just doesn't exist. And so you're kind of left a little bit to your own devices uh, to see what's going to work for you. So I would be very um, uh, sort of, I would, I would promote that the idea that you should probably experiment a little bit and see what's going to work for you be objective about it. Now, if you do, do, do decide you want to go on a, you know, a carnivorous diet or a keto carnivorous diet or a meat based diet or whatever you want to call it. Um, I think one of the things, one of the tenets that I've found that, that, you know, what's, what, what makes a diet unsuccessful. And I think that's an important thing. And so if you are constantly fighting hunger, it's going to be very difficult to do this on over a long-term uh, compliance thing. And the other thing, if you find what you're eating is not particularly palatable, you know? And so I think when we go from, I'm eating, you know, junk food, ice cream, cakes, cookies, biscuits, you know, that, that you know, we know they taste good and their industry makes it for us. So that tastes good. And we love that stuff, but it's not very good for us. If I'm going to replace that with something that's going to actually allow me to come off of that stuff, you know, kale and quinoa doesn't really do it very well for most people. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, okay, I, you know, I, I'd still, but, but it, when you start getting something that I think is more nourishing, and I, and I you know, personally find, and many people, I think many people are like this way, they'll find that 
you know, really truly nutritious food, particularly animal foods, particularly, you know, with, with adequate animal, animal fat generally fits that bill for both taste enjoyment and also for nutritional su- sufficiency and satiation. Because again, dealing with hunger, dealing with bland or, or unpalatable food, you know, you, you can lose a lot of weight on an all cardboard diet. You really <laughs> could. And if you take your supplements, you wouldn't, you know, you could supplement that and put vitamins and minerals and you wouldn't die. But you know, that, that's not, but that's not a very sustainable strategy. I don't think anybody would want to do that over, over a long period of time. And so I think those, those things. And then I think if you, like I said, if we decide we're going to adopt this sort of dietary strategy, when I tell people, I do a lot of coaching with people and they have goals. They'll say, my goal is to lose 30 pounds or my goal is to get rid of my psoriasis or, you know, uh, get a six pack or, or put on 20 pounds of muscle or whatever. And they have all these sort of personal goals. And I, I, I ask you, why haven't you achieved that goal yet? Why haven't you already done that? And the question is, well, I, I, I most of the time they don't know. Well, one of the reasons is they have a very um, problematic relationship with food. That is, you know, the, on the nutrition side, and exercise is a different part of this, but on the nutrition side, uh, we're dealing with, um, you know, f- food addictions. We're dealing with, you know, not with really what I would call an improper relationship with, with food and nutrition. We aren't eating for the purpose of nutrition or eating for the purpose of, um, I want to please someone else. I'm bored. This is my coping mechanism. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's 12 o'clock and, it's, it, and society says it's time to eat or, you know, anyway, we, we can name 20 different reasons why people eat outside of nutrition. It's entertainment. Food is entertainment rather than nutrition. So you have to sort of, sort of break away from that mindset and, and to do that initially, you know, and so, so if somebody says, I want to lose 50 pounds, they say, how many calories do I need to eat? You know, I could say, you know, we're going to cut your calories. We're going to make you eat leaner. And, and, and yes, you'd probably lose weight, but guess what? You might hate it. You'll end up quitting. You'll be, you'll be in, in Twinkies and cupcakes in, in six mm-hmm. weeks anyway. So I think the goal initially is to change your relationship with food. And how do you do that? You've got to be able to overcome these cravings. You've got to change your physiology yeah. so that you're not constantly craving that glucose. Because when you, as you guys know, as you transition away from glucose being a you know, glucose being the, 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 the primary fuel for us to a more fat base. And it's not that we're completely 100% glucose or 100% fat. We're always in this mixture. Yes. But when you're predominantly using fat and you have glucose still when you need it for intense exercise or intense situations, but when you're pre- predominantly relying on fat or that's your background material, you don't have these sort of wild cravings. You're not having this, uh, I would call it like a cellular crisis where there's an, there's an energy crisis and you get this you know, ravenous hunger where you're, you'll eat the next thing that walks in front of you. You might eat one of your children, if, if, you know. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's, you know, like I said, but, you know, in the modern society environment, anywhere, I'm sure it's the same in Australia, you know, anywhere you go, doctor's office, gas state, I mean, there's junk food everywhere. I mean, it's just it's everywhere. It's ubiquitous. It surrounds us. It's never going away. You're never going to get in this situation unless you're a hermit that lives up in a cave. You're never going to be a situation if you if you still remain in society where that food will not always be around you, and so you have to have the physiological capacity to resist it. So if your if your physiology isn't working, you know if you're always hungry, if you're always starving for glucose, I don't care how hard you are, how disciplined you are, mm-hmm. you're not going to be able to do this long term. And so you've got to change that physiology, and then you can work on the psychology. So the first few months really should be just let's change our relationship with food. Many people, even obese people, are malnourished. I mean, they might have a caloric sufficiency, but they're missing out on a critical nutrients. It might be protein, it might be minerals, it might be vitamins, it might be fat-soluble vitamins. So you have to restore some of that. You know, when we look at older people and we, you know, we, we put them in a, a CAT scan or an MRI scanner and we just examine their organs, we see that their, their kidneys have shrunken down, their bones have gotten you know, they've, they've, they've lost mass in their bones, their muscles have shrunken down, their skin's gotten thinner, less resilient. I mean, their brain has actually just gotten smaller. This is due to, you know, just not enough building material. And there's other things that are going on, problems with digestive absorption. But trying to restore that is important. So, I mean, you know, you know loading yourself up with the most bioavailable, nutrient-dense food possible, which, you know, really is, is just basically animal food, helps mm-hmm. you restore that. So that, that's the beginning phase, you know. And then I think, you know, after that, for most people, they don't really have to do much else beyond that because the diet often will take care of itself. I mean, there's a lot of, I would, I would posit that 
humans didn't eat every two hours, you know, uh, you know <laughs> throughout our evolution. It would have been very, very impractical if you're, if you're a nomadic person, and, and that's what humans were, hunter-gatherers, or I would say mostly hunters and uh, gathering as needed. But, you know, that sort of lifestyle, you know, we can look at the, the Aboriginal folks in, in Australia. I mean, they, they you know, they, they ate all the big animals, basically. But, mm-hmm. you know, you, you've got this situation where you, you, it's just, particularly if you're cooking, I mean, who... If you have to, if you're eating cooked food and you've got to make a build, build a fire every two hours, I mean, you're a nomad, I mean, just, you're not walking around with a microwave. And so it's like so eating frequency is, is, a, is an issue. And I think what happens, there's a lot of talk around intermittent fasting and autophagy and caloric restriction and, you know, perhaps, um, you know, eating larger doses at one time and then, and, then, and then not eating for a long period of time. That is probably more in line with how we are designed. Um, that's how most animals that are primarily meat eaters, carnivorous animals tend to do that. I mean, there's like crocodiles that might eat once every three months or six months. So, yeah. I mean, there is, there is some level of uh, probably frequency that's right for humans. And I think when you're eating a human appropriate food, most people, after a period of time, fall into this sort of infrequent meal pattern. Myself, you know, 95% of the time I eat twice a day. And, and that just works perfect for me. And it's not based on me sitting there with a stopwatch saying, okay, it's okay, 17 hours and 52 minutes, but I can't, can't eat until three hours. I don't do that. I just, I, I just let it naturally happen. And I think that's really the easiest thing to do. And, I, and, and the other thing I would say is, don't upset, you know, food should not make you anxious. Food mm-hmm. should not make, you know, eating should not be some sort of contrived scientific, uh, you know, process. I and mean, it's like breathing. It's like going to the bathroom. It's like any other physical thing that we do, it should be a very natural process. And, and I think when you're eating us, you know, what I would call a species appropriate diet, those things kind of happen naturally. And so I, I, I think for some people, the artificial supports and the crutches, can be helpful for a period of time. But I think long-term, I mean, goodness, there's no other animal on the planet that needs, uh, you know, a macronutrient calculator or an app <laughs> or, or, or Fitbit tracker to, to, yeah. to be healthy. And I don't think we need to be, we don't need that either. So I think that's just a, it's, it's really, really subtracting complexity out of your life, making it simple. Uh, my goodness, you know, why should, why should human nutrition be so hard? It just doesn't yeah. make sense. That's right. So, um, Sean, it's, it's really interesting because a lot of the things that you said there really resonate. And we get a lot of people who, you know, they're transitioning and, you know, they've got that disordered relationship with food that, you know, their eating patterns are dysfunctional, but they get on to either carnivore or, or keto or somewhere in between. And they get all these, you know, the, the symptoms, those transition symptoms. And they really struggle with it. So that first few months, we, we know if they push past three to six months, they're going to see the benefits. Their body will detox. Their body will heal. Their gut will heal. The microbiome will come back to where it needs to be. All those things will happen. But it takes time, right? Because it's a, it's a long game. This is not an overnight change. But so many people, they struggle, as you said, mentally with, with doing this, you know, making this transition. So they, they kind of fall out of the the way of eating, they fall out of the lifestyle and they don't ever reach that point of getting, getting the benefits, right? What do you do when you've got somebody like that? How do you motivate and encourage them to stay with it for the long term? Yeah, I mean, I think that to be fair, we have to tell people that, you know, for some people it just, you know, it's not going to work for them and, and, that's, and that's fine. There shouldn't be any, any sort of uh, belief that, you know, there's, there's only one way to do this. Now, I certainly am biased. I think this is an excellent way to do it. I think there's a lot of reasons to compel people uh, to do a, you know, a carnivorous style diet that, that works well uh, for, 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 you know, like I said, a variety of reasons. But I think that um, early on, um, you know, and I think this is with any, any diet that you're going to use, I mean, support is very important. And so having you know, set yourself up for success. You know, I mean, if you are in a situation where all you got is people that are around you that are negative, that are telling you, you know, you're, what are you crazy? You're eating meat. You're going to have your, your colon's going to fall out of cancer. You're going to have a heart attack tomorrow. And you're, yeah. you're constantly exposed to that. You know, you figure out a way to find a supportive environment. You know, I mean, it might, it might not be virtual. It might not be online. You might have to talk to people that have gone through this, you know, find, find people that, that, that have experienced what you're experiencing. You know, at the beginning, you know, you should, you should have a goal of why you're doing the diet and it shouldn't be, I want to fit into a size two dress. I mean, it should be, 
this is what I'd like to do in my life and be able to do. And, and you know, there's, cause there's a lot of people that really, I mean, their quality of life is so poor. I mean, their only sort of joy in life is watching it show on TV and stuffing their face with food. So we've got to get out of that and think, what could I do if I were healthy? What would I do with my life? And, and, and put that in as a goal. So mm -hmm. that gives you a reason to continue doing this. But I mean, as far as the, you know, the transition stuff, um, yeah, I mean, it certainly happens. And, and, and I think there's things you can do to mitigate some of those things. I think some of the biggest issues, as I mentioned earlier, for many people, meat is extremely satiating. And, and, and for some people, they just, they just can't eat enough. And it's, it can be very challenging. They don't, <laughs> they don't, um, they just under eat. And so sometimes, you know, if you're lethargic, or your energy is low, or your mood is low, it may just be a simple matter of just kind of forcing yourself to eat a little bit more. And some mm -hmm. people, you know, aren't used to that because they're used to, you know, eat all the time. And, and, and when you get into this diet, it's like, wow, I, you know, you tell somebody you're going to eat a, you know, 500 grams of meat in one sitting. And they're like, that's like, I could never do that. But I mean, yeah. why not? It's, it, for many people, it's very simple after a period of time. Um, you know, I think the, uh, the common things we see that, that can put people off, you know, the fluid shifts, the electrolyte shifts, sometimes having some education going into this so you understand what's going on and so if like wow i've got a headache or i'm just run down or i feel like you know people call it the keto flu knowing what potentially might help doesn't guarantee it's not going to kind of occur but maybe may staying on top of your electrolytes mm -hmm. and remember dehydration if you just drink water without mm -hmm. electrolytes you're gonna you're gonna run into problems because you're gonna end up becoming diluted basically so you have to keep on top of that for some people i think there is uh, you know gi issues do occur when you're transitioning away from a high fiber diet to a essentially a zero fiber diet. And so some people will have a period of time where they're like the, not having fiber in their diet is, is, is kind of causing issues that does get better with time. There's some, some people have to you do some, make some adjustments, but generally, uh, you know, I guess knowing, first of all, knowing what you might, might expect early on is helpful having the support and then having a, you know, I think a, a valid goal or, 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 or a really healthy goal in yes. mind is going to help, help people in that situation. Yeah, I com completely agree, Sean. I think that, that, like you said, that goal and having the goal, not, not the superficial, just the weight loss goal, but what are you trying to do with your life? Why, mm. why are you doing this? So important to people because that is much more motivating than just getting to that size two in the, you know, in the dress. So yeah, I totally agree with that one. Um, so hey, you know, we talked a lot about you know carnivore and how people might get started but what about you sean if you think about your your day and your life what, what really keeps you grounded and motivated you know you're working with a lot of people you're out there doing competitions and you know you've got this awesome track record but what keeps sean grounded and motivated every day well i mean you know this, this despite what i you know i've got this online sort of persona and and some people think you know it's, it's <laughs> You know, I sometimes I do some very, I would say, inflammatory or entertaining things. And I do that <laughs> with intent because I know, you know, I've been around long enough to know that, you, you know, even the best message, if no one hears it, it doesn't matter. So you have to figure out a way to, you know, kind of entertain and then educate. And, and, and so I, I have to participate in that. But I mean, what really keeps me going is just all the people that I see every single day and the tremendous health benefits they're seeing. I mean, this is something that as, this is why I went into to medicine in the first place was to help people with their health. And this has been so much more powerful from a result standpoint than anything I saw as a surgeon. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'd see people whose knee was arthritic and I put a new knee in them. Yeah, great doc, I love it. My knees feels better, so on and so forth. But this, that was like, you know, minor leagues compared to what I'm seeing now where it's like, you know, I was everything in my life was wrong. All my, my, I was suffering from 10 different diseases and I was suicidal and yeah. mm. everything is better and I don't need to be on medicines. I don't need surgeries. And I think that is such a wonderful motivating thing for me. And then, you know, obviously it's an uphill battle because obviously I'm talking about things that most people would say that doesn't match what we've been taught for the last 50 years or hundred years or how long you want to see our nutritional biases go back to. And so it's uh it's kind of fun. I mean, I, I am, I like fighting. I'm a competitor. I'm a competitor. I, mean, I, I, you know, I just, some of it, I just, I mean, it, 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 it's like, I enjoy it. I, I look at these little things. I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't want to, I don't, I don't wish ill on anyone else, but you know, damn it. I'm a competitor. If, I, if I'm going to beat you, you know, I'm gonna, we're going to 
to have the healthiest people. My my goal is to have the healthiest population I can possibly have, and right. what it takes to get there. And that's my, you know, that would be my reward for me. And, and like I said, we're, you know, it seems like you know when I when I started this, you know, three years ago, it was kind of for fun. And uh, and, and how much it has changed. From when I was, oh, this is a crazy guy that's trying to eat meat for 30 days. Look at him, ha, 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 how funny is it? And then it became serious, and then we, and we started getting more people involved. And how much it has dramatically changed just in the last three years. I mean, this, is, this has been a very, uh, uh, you know, just rapidly moving movement. And we're seeing people from all over the world. I'm getting people all over the world every day saying, look, this is something that is changing lives everywhere. And I, I, that's exciting to me. And, and it's what kind of gets me up every morning and makes me want to see what's going to happen next. Cause every day is a surprise. I get, you know, it's like every day I get some new incredible thing or different opportunity and, you know, trying to manage that stuff. And it's, it's just a lot of fun. I'm having, I'm, I'm really, I'm having fun every single day with what I do. I mean, I deal with some wackos, but I just kind of laugh at these guys. But, I mean, where, whereas when I was a physician and, you know, going to work, I mean, a lot of it was kind of the grind, the, uh, the, you know, dealing with stuff that was, there was, there were still good fun parts of it, but it was, you know, 20% fun and 80% mm. not fun. And, right. and now it's, it's probably the other way. It's about 80% fun and 20% not fun, which, which, you know, I think at the end of the day, you know, we want to enjoy what we do. And if, 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 if we can actually do it for, for occupation or a living, that's, that's, that's the best situation, I think. Yeah, hundred mm. percent. So you, you spoke about, you love a good fight and, uh, <laughs> At the moment, we've got a bit of a fight on our hands. We've got the Game Changers movies come out and it's created a lot of conversation. You've been quite verbal in, uh, in, in your opinion of the, the movie. So for those shooting in, some would have seen the movie, some wouldn't have. So mm. snapshot, what is the movie about and why is it important to have the conversation around what's in the movie, what are some of the myths we need to bust and how do we move forward to make sure we don't have people moving away from a meat-based diet? just because one movie's come out with a few, a uh, few ideas. Yeah. I mean, we see this, I mean, every, it seems like every year or two, there's a, there's a sort of a big film. There was, I guess, what the health about two years ago, kind of a summer yes. situation where they, they get, you know, they get people uh, to try a vegan diet and that's their goal. And, and we've seen that, you know, for, you know, the vegan society was founded, I think in 1944 and, you know, it's, it's grown a little bit, but then generally, it always seems to be about one, one and a half percent of the population is vegan for a period of time. And then they quit, you know, they, they do it for a year or two. Most of them sometimes a couple, a couple weeks or a couple months, but it doesn't, it doesn't sort of gain any popularity and traction. And what the movie is, is set out to do is to say, Hey, you can be an athlete on a plant-based diet, which is fine. I think that's fine. I don't think you can be the best athlete. I think if you were to take, uh, uh, let's just use an example. If we were to just take Scott Jurek as an ultra runner, who's who's very accomplished, you know, did some great things, mm-hmm. and you were you were to to clone him and put a Scott Jurek to train just the same and ate a diet that was you know had more meat in it, mm-hmm. I would say that guy would win win the race, right? Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's not that you know there's there's certain people that are genetic outliers, and we see this, you know, in, in professional sports. I mean, it's, it's probably in Australian rules football, and yeah. you know, and 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 you know, you know rugby league and, and so on and so forth. And we sit in the NFL and football. We see these very, very genetically talented physical specimens and they eat literally junk. I mean, they literally have a diet that would, <laughs> would cringe. You know, it's, 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 it's McDonald's French fries and Coca-Cola's and gummy bears. And they are just incredible physiques. And so you take some of those guys and you say, Hey guys, we're going to go on a plant-based diet. We're going to cut out all that crap, you know, and they're going to say, well, you cut out the meat, but in reality, they're cutting out, you know, all kinds of garbage food and they, they feel better for a period of time. And we see this over and over again. They feel better for a period of time and they might even see a slight improvement in performance for a limited period of time. And then generally what happens is they, they inevitably decline when it comes with performance. And so the nice thing is, you know, we're seeing these athletes test out the theory and they're generally proving it to fail. Um, this is what we're seeing for the majority of people. And, mm-hmm. You know, within the movie there, I mean, they just, you know, I put a, a video out there kind of going through point by point on what I thought was wrong. And I, I did it very quickly. And, I, and, you know, if I had two hours, I would I would go through more and more stuff in there. But really, if you follow almost all of the athletes in the film and you see you know, that film was shot presumably around 2017, you look at them where they are in 2019, almost all of the plant-based athletes have seen a dramatic 
decline in their career. And many of them just gave up sport completely. And so it's, it's kind of like a very snapshotted, uh, you know, sort of, sort of misleading representation. You know, the, the, the boxer they showed, this Brian Jennings guy, who's 17 0 undefeated prior to starting vegan. And once he was vegan, he lost more fights than he won. So it's just, you know, you see this when you, when you actually look into this, but I mean, the science they use wasn't really, uh, very, I mean, they, they, they do the same thing that they like to use. They use some epidemiologic studies. You yeah. know, they use these uh, things that aren't really good science. Or they're not causation. They did some funny little non-scientific experiments. And it was just, it was all for drama and effect. And it, it, was, it was really a plea to emotion. Uh, it's not really, uh, again, science that, that many people would, would say is this is what the science shows. It's, this is, you know, anybody can argue for any position using the scientific literature. I know because I do that all the time. I mean, I say this study supports meat eating and people say, well, that's cherry pick. Well, I said, well, this, so does this one and this one and this one. And we just get in this tit for tat thing. And we're like, none of that's good science. And, and at mm -hmm. the end of the day, it's true. There's not very good science out there uh, mm -hmm. that you can hang your hat on. And so at the end of the day, it's like, you know, you've got to test it on yourself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you want to, you know, if you want to go do a plant-based diet for a while, great, do it, be objective about it. And then compare it to it may be a meat centric diet where you don't have junk food in there because, you know, everybody wants to compare what we call the standard American diet, which is now the standard Australian diet. And so that is a meat eater's diet. Well, no, it's not. It's not my diet. I don't eat all that crap. I eat basically meat and that's it. Maybe some eggs, some fish, maybe a little bit of dairy here and there. And I care about my health. I'm not trying to get heart disease. I'm not trying to have cancer. I mean, I mean, why would I do that? I mean, I exercise, I take care of myself. I don't smoke. I get you know a decent amount of sleep, um, and I'm very much concerned about. And I'm a competitive athlete. I'm, I want to I want to win, so mm. I'm not I'm not doing this uh, diet because I think you know meat tastes good. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> of course it does, but I mean it's not. Right. <laughs> if I was picking a diet on on what I'd eat chocolate cake. I mean that would be <laughs> that would be my diet. So I mean it's it's kind of absurd. They say you're only doing it. You know the vegans will say well, you're only doing it because your taste buds. I'm like. That's the most absurd thing I've seen. Half of those guys are sugar addicts anyway. I mean, they're in their, you know, constant fruit smoothies and throwing yes. all kinds of sweeteners, everything. And they're like, you yeah. know, that seems like that you're doing that for your taste book because you're a sugar addict. But anyway, it is a, uh, I know in Australia, you guys have a lot of craziness going on. I see all the protests and the poor, poor farmers going under attack. And, and I think it's, you know, just as an aside, I think we as, consumers need to support the people that feed us. I mean, we really need to get behind those folks and say, hey guys, you're doing a hard job. Thank God you're doing it because I probably couldn't do it or wouldn't do it or wouldn't want to do it. But right. you, guys, you guys are getting up early morning every day, 365 days a year, taking care of those animals, taking care of those crops, whatever it is, and feeding us and we need to support you. And people that are demonizing our, 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 our the food producers. And you know, in the United States, the average age is 63 years old for ranchers and farmers and so uh -huh. well, no one wants to do it anymore they're like we're tired yeah. of dealing with crap you know who's going to feed us i mean you know, are we going to all be eating processed uh you know kibble nutrient fortified from big giant factories is that what we're going to end up doing i think that's a real realistic possibility you know over the next 30 to 50 years if we as a population don't make a stand and say look we want to protect our human appropriate diet and protect our food sovereignty. And, and I think that's important. Absolutely. Hmm. So Sean, just before we, before we move on your, your coaching business. So as a, as someone who is going through kind of, where you offer a coaching service or a product that um, someone can come to you, can you just walk us through what that is and what someone could expect if they came on board and said, I, I need to do carnivore. You're obviously a leader in that community. What's, what is the product and how does it help someone getting started? We are about to launch a huge platform, carnivore platform called Meet RX. So like Meet Prescription, Meet RX, right? Yeah. And it is going to be a resource library with all kinds of studies and success and all the success stories we've had. We've cataloged them by different topics and, and you know, recipes and community support and all this stuff we're building. And we're also doing, going to be offering a coaching certification program. We're going to be training coaches. Yeah. I'm going to be personally mentoring these people in what I do and how I like to do it. And, and that's coming. So that's going to be really exciting because we, we're going to make it affordable. We don't want to charge everybody an arm and a leg just to learn how to eat. So we want to make it like really accessible to the, as many people as possible. 
um, get people started on this, get the basics out there. But my general thing is, you know, I, I coach all kinds of people, from professional athletes to retired school teachers with bad health. And, and, yep. and, and so, you know, first of all, you gotta, you know, I, I like to talk, let them tell their story. I mean, that's so important. Tell me about yourself. What's your story? And, you know, I kind of figure out what, now, what do we want to, what are you wanting to do? Why are you doing this stuff? You know, we get a little, you know, a little bit of trying to build a rapport with the folks. And then I basically, you know, I try to tell them what I think works for, 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 you know, putting a strategy. And I, and I, and I you know, it's not, uh, you know, a 30 day quick fix. I mean, I tell people, look, this is a long-term process. Yes. This is, you know, what you should do over a lifetime. And it, it, and it doesn't mean you need to be a strict carnivore for the rest of your life, but let's try to solve the problems you're having. And let's assume that nutrition and, and other lifestyle things have a role there. And, and let's try to simplify it. And like I said, it's like there's, there was an old game called Clue. I don't know if Australia had that, but it was a game where you would, you know, you would put characters on the board and somebody committed a murder and you had like eight characters. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it was like, you know, you had, you had a series of guesses and it would take you 20, 30 minutes and a hundred guesses to figure out who actually did it. Was it Colonel Mustard in the library with a broom <laughs> with a candlestick, right? Yeah. So when you're trying to solve out these dietary issues, you know, it just makes sense to remove as many characters as possible. You know, if you're playing a game of Clue with a thousand food items, I mean, my God, it could take your, your whole life to figure that out. So yeah. simplify, reduce, make it easy on yourself, be objective about it. Um, and then, you know, and then as time goes by, we can figure out what is actually the, the best diet for you, because it may not be a fully carnivorous diet. It might be, and for many people it is. I think, you know, if we look at animals, you know, animal, you know, again, this is, goes back to an evolutionary theory and a lot of people are maybe not, you know, disagree with that, but the earliest animals that ever evolved about 800 million years ago were carnivorous. We st animal, the default setting for animals is carnivorous. And it makes sense because you're, you're building and maintaining structure. And, and when you take like things and you put them in like things, it, it's easier to build. You know, when you uh, are putting, so herbivory evolved much later in, in, in species evolution. And so that was, that required specialized adaptations. It's harder to get nutrition from grass. The grasslands evolved about hundred million years ago. So we have this whole situation where, getting food from plants is more challenging. It's not that we can't do it, but it's more challenging to do this. And so a carnivorous approach is just easier. It's simpler. Some people call that being lazy, you know, well, why would, and I say, well, it's just being smart in my view. Why would we make something overly complicated? Yeah. You know, there's people like, well, you know, you could ferment this vegetable and you could, <laughs> you could, you could process yeah. this this way and you could balance this and you could still get the same result. I said, yeah, you could, but I don't really want to think about it. I don't want to, I don't want food to be, you know, anxiety provoking my life. I just want to eat and, and enjoy the food. And so, um, you know, I, I try to get that. I, I try to get the people on a mindset of simplicity rather than complication. Cause I get questions all the time about what about this? What about that? And they worry about the minutia. And it's like, yeah, yeah that maybe make, may, it may have an effect, but it's really like 0.02%. Do we want to really, do we really want to focus on that? Or do we want to focus on the big picture? And, you know, and, and I think that's the important part. So when does the new platform come online, John? Uh, I think we're going to coincide the launch of that platform with the release of the book. So the book is coming out November 19th, which is a week from today. So I know I've got, we've got a whole team. It was, it's been wonderful. I've got a partner up in Silicon Valley who's very, very motivated. She's like the CTO, the chief technical officer, and I'm the CEO. And, and we've been working as a, as a group. But she's really been just killing it, getting everybody organized. And we've got a team of like 30 volunteers that just, Wow. out of the goodness of their heart because they were so inspired. We put a call out for people who want to volunteer and they're like, we want to help you build this. We want to make it successful. We've got, you know, lawyers writing up all the disclaimers for free. I mean, this is just all that's just the support. It's been wonderful uh, seeing the, the community wanting to give back because, you know, like I said, I've been, you know, I've been just, you know, doing this and trying to help people largely for free for, for several years now. And, and it's just, it's nice to see the people say, Hey, you've changed my life for the better. What can I do to help? And I'm like, well, you know, maybe you can, help us catalog some recipes or whatever. And, and people yeah. are like, yeah, I'd love to, love to do it. And so it's been really fun to see. Mm. Oh, that, that's, that's awesome, Sean. So I guess, you know, it's been a really fascinating um, mm. episode where, you know, you've taken us through everything from, you know, goal setting to understanding your motivation to how you might approach the carnival way of eating through how do we challenge back and how do we 
plus those myths on the, the game changers through to your life and what keeps you grounded to some of those benefits that people don't really realize things like the simplicity of this way of life um, you know not being tied to food so really amazing tips for, for our listeners and viewers so we really appreciate that appreciate you giving up your time and, and coming on the podcast and we want to wish you every success with the new book and Absolutely. the new platform we can't wait to, to see it and have a look well thank you very much i appreciate you giving me the opportunity and you guys I don't even know what time. Well, you're, you guys are morning there in Australia. Yeah, it's morning. Morning. Yeah, you guys enjoy your day. You, you guys enjoy tomorrow. You guys are already on tomorrow. You guys are already ahead of me. So. <laughs>